I think this will be one of the most vulnerable video that I will ever make. I've been a people pleaser and I'm a recovering people pleaser. I know that is attributed to the traumas I've had to face, you know, as someone that was molested and I've actually been in places that I've worked on eggshells for a long time because I didn't feel acceptance. I didn't feel literal love. I'm a Christian, love God, been loving God, but I did not know the impact that my people pleasing is having on my faith. How my seeking for approval and validation from people is impacting my faith. Now, that's what I want to talk about today. People pleasing versus pleasing God. How seeking approval impacts your faith. I just want to share about me. I did a lot of things for validation. Some of my smarts and some of the things that I pushed myself to do, I did it to be validated and did it to be accepted. Me learning how to play instruments, learning how to play almost all instruments, I did it to feel a void, get some applause, to get some you know, appreciation from people. Even me being overly nice and <laughs> I realized that being nice is actually one of the traits of a people pleaser. Being kind and being nice are two different things. Being nice could even be a selfish act. Mm. It could be a selfish act because you're doing it for you. You're not actually just doing it for the person you're doing it for. You're doing it for you because it's feeling something. It's fulfilling a need you have. You just want to be nice. You want to please them. You want to be liked by them. I'm a recovering people pleaser, like I said earlier. The number one thing I want to talk about is the shame to be bold about my faith. I know I love the Lord. I know like I've been in constant pursuit of the Lord since when I was small. But then the reality is, I know I, I've talked about in my videos how I was legalistic because that was the only thing I knew. I've talked about the fact that I pursued God and I felt like I didn't feel his love because I was trying to love him. I didn't know that it was the other way around that I received his love, then I'm able to love him back. But that is just one side. This part is I did not have this kind of like boldness to share my faith. I had some shame around my faith. A lot of people because of my lifestyle would be like, oh, pastor. And I would feel kind of shy like, calling me pastor i'm not a pastor almost like refuting and re like giving a reboot out to that i had a shame attached to my faith and i now realize that this was based on my people pleasing tendency because i've seen people who are so bored about their beliefs atheists bored about their beliefs and every other kind of people having a belief and they are bored about it why am i not bored about mine i know it's real to me i believe it i know why i believe it i know nobody will change my mind about it but i cannot be bored about it and mark it i'm not trying to talk about the religious people that want to send everybody to hell that are holier than thou in fact that was what i was avoiding almost like i don't want to be like this person that is trying to be like i'm better than you i'm holier than you because i know I have my own weaknesses, I have my own flaws. But then when I studied about my Jesus, I call him my Jesus, I realized that he spoke with sinners and he didn't have to take the responsibility of making sinners to be comfortable around him. He just was himself. He did not have to bother about, are they going to be comfortable? Should he change who he is? Should he switch code? Should he try to act like them so that they'll be comfortable? And as a people pleaser, that might be what is affecting you that among your friend groups you can't really like proclaim your faith this is what i believe about god that i believe in jesus i believe that he died i believe he resurrected i believe in living a good life because it's almost like people when they boast about is about boasting about being a rugged guy for guys it's about boasting about body count it's about boasting about the things that they do it's about boasting about drinking and i'm like yeah i used to drink but i stopped paul said i'd rather boast about my weaknesses so I realized that I wasn't bored about my faith. And when I read this, Paul was talking to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. And don't be ashamed of me either. Even though I'm in prison for him, with the strength God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. Mm. I had a shame to really come out with proclaiming the Lord. The back end of this scripture in 2 Timothy 1, verse 8, that I just read of Paul telling Timothy, don't be ashamed to tell others about our Lord, is from the scripture that we always do read. That God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. It's about understanding that, that leads you to not being ashamed to tell people. And even though I quoted that scripture for too long, I had the fear of rejection. That is my second point. As a people pleaser, I had the fear of rejection. Because I don't know when we prayed or talked about God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. But then there are real fears of like fear of being rejected, fear of being disliked. Fear of being abandoned, fear of not being loved, fear of people leaving your life. And it's like, God says he didn't give you the spirit of fear. So, which means people may not like you. 
for following Christ. People may not like tender to you for following Christ, but this will affect your faith if you're trying to get people to like you because that's not your duty. If you're trying to live a life that will make other people comfortable, that's not your duty. You just have to be authentic. Paul said, obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servants. Galatians 1 verse 10. When I read this, whoosh. Paul said, I'm not trying to please you. Because in his day, and talking to the Galatians, it was about the theology they believed. Had it been he wanted to please them, he would never preach the gospel of grace. Because it was not accepted in this day. We will not be accepted in the world like we want to be. It is just a realization that I'm coming to. The world will not accept us and our views and our values like we want them to. And we can't force them to accept that. The laws of our God may not be put in the school and in the institutions for them to accept but we have a responsibility to live authentic lives maybe our life will be the bible that people will see i want to be like this brother i want to be like this sister maybe my boldness and me getting out of this fear of rejection and knowing that god has accepted me and in christ he says to me that i am accepted i'm well pleasing to him in Christ Jesus. So what other acceptance am I looking for? If God has accepted me, I don't need their acceptance. Because if I live for the acceptance, I will be crushed under their criticism. I can't live for anyone's acceptance at this point. And this is not about all this pride statement that people make. I don't want anybody to accept me. I don't want the approval of anybody and all of that. It's not based on that. You have to be a good person, do things that are good, treat people right, but then don't do anything for their validation because people don't need to validate the things that God has called you to do. If you're waiting for the likes on your social media, and I can even be honest to say, at first starting YouTube and all of these posting videos, when I don't see a lot of views and I come like see other channels that I'm like, <laughs> some of these contents are not really like <laughs> that well versed like man i don't know why the algorithm is pushing theirs and they're getting a lot of views and i'm not i'm like did you do it for that so that's where i came to a point for me to get 10 views it means 10 unique people get to watch my video to the end and they were blessed that's enough for me the numbers matter but then i'm not about the number at this point so that i will not make videos based on the number that are coming so that i will just make it based on what god is leading me to share because if i make the videos i make based on the numbers that i get my people please i would want to be liked i want to get a thousand views you know one million views and all of that of course i will get there which i believe i will but then my perception matters am i living for that the next thing is the fear of judgment and criticism i have been my worst critic to be honest like i criticize myself so that before another person will have a chance <laughs> <laughs> to criticize me i've already done all the work i read the proverbs when i was young uh, when my dad bought my first bible for me what i did was i wrote some proverbs like i wrote the proverbs down from the book of proverbs i wrote those ones that were connecting with me down and i learned it and one that stuck to my head was a wise man ponders on his words so one thing that i've always been used to even up to this point is i ponder on every word in fact my brain is so fast that as i'm thinking i'm talking i'm thinking about it so i'm not just saying what without thinking about it i don't just drop what without thinking about it and after dropping what i still think about it the aftermath of what i said because sometimes we are humans you can say things and then that's not how you meant it and then the way it poured out kind of like get a wrong interpretation i didn't know how to give myself grace but i'm learning the fear of people judging me i didn't want people to disagree with me i didn't want people to dislike me i didn't want people to judge me what i'm learning is not to take such things personal at some point because even fellow christians will say things that you would look at them and be like, why would you say that? I would have expected that from someone else, not you. Scripture says in John, when Jesus was talking, if the world hates you, you know it hated me first. It hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I choose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. Don't be bothered about it. The fact that people don't agree when you share about christ don't be bothered about that people don't see the world from the view that you have and that is my consolation they didn't keep his word will they keep yours they persecuted him wouldn't they persecute you the fourth thing is compromise the greatest error of people pleasing is compromising on the values of god and compromising on the will of god for your life as much as i've been struggling with people pleasing the one thing i try to be careful with is not to compromise when it gets to that point i'm like okay i can't do this again i have to stick with the word of god i feel bad for you know almost like disappointing you but then i can't compromise so we see someone 
Saul, the king in Israel, he compromised and then he lost his throne. And this was his word. Then Saul admitted to Samuel, yes, I have sinned. I have disobeyed your instructions and the Lord's command. For I was afraid of the people and did what they demanded. Compromise most times comes out of a place of trying to live your life based on people's expectation of you. You are trying to meet up with people's expectation of you. And you cannot live like that. You can't meet everybody's expectation of you. Your parents' expectation, oh, you have to get married, you have to get married, your friends are getting married. You have to do this. It's still a part of people pleasing. You have to do this. You have to do that. The pressure they put on you. Oh, because they are expecting this of you. Let me do it. All these expectations. What is God's expectation of you? What if God did not want you to get married at this age? And God is still saying you have a lot of work that I need to do in you before you get out there so that you will not be crushed under the weight of this institution called marriage because you have a lot of wounds. It's okay for people to disagree with you that is my take home it is okay for people to disagree with me it is okay for everybody not to accept or agree or believe what i believe i am good with that it is okay for people not to even understand me it's okay to be misunderstood it's hard it's hard to even accept this because i'm like i don't want to be misunderstood i want to be understood i want to be clear that's why sometimes i get into argument that's why sometimes i get into like all this fight of words with people sometimes I'm, I'm like aggressive because i'm like that's not my mindset that's not what i meant i want to be understood i want to make myself clear but sometimes you have to just allow people to disagree with you and misunderstand you even in the scripture it said about jesus that he was misunderstood in john chapter 6 when he said you have to eat my body and drink my blood if you want to have life and all of that and the people misunderstood him and they all left they disagreed with him and he said to the disciples are you also gonna leave and they said where do we go to you are the one that has the word of eternal life but they left so if people disagree with you and don't get to understand you and they get to leave allow them leave it is better the people that don't understand you are not in your space so they won't constantly be in a place of trying to explain yourself to them when they have decided not to understand who you are and what you are made of you just have to accept this and then your life should be, does God understand me? Does God love me? Has God accepted me? In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18, it says, For not he who commends himself is approved, but whom the Lord commends. If God has commended you, if God has validated you, if God has accepted you and he has, then that is what counts. That is the only commendation, validation, acceptance, attention you need. Yeah, I know you need other attention, but that is what fills the hole in your heart every other attention becomes secondary for you to please god once you please god the bible says once a man's way is pleasing to the lord he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him god alone can do that so if your way is pleasing to god and if you are living a life that is pleasing god the people that are meant to be pleased by your life will be pleased and the people that are meant to be not pleased you can't make them pleased even if you try i hope this video is valuable to you i just wanted to share my heart and share my journey i know i've not shared everything there were times that i did things that i didn't give the whole of me because i believe the little that i gave of me was enough for people to clap for me to validate me but i'm going all in i want to believe god with every fiber of my being that everything he has for me will be fulfilled here in this lifetime on earth like david said that i will see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living i'm going to give in my best i recorded a song in 2012 which i released in 2013 and i believe i didn't give my best to that song but then to that album but then people really kind of like clapped for me they, they appreciated the work when i'm like this is not the whole of me i know there was more to pour but i didn't pour out all and my desire is that for every project that i'm going into from now i'm pouring out everything i'm giving the very best the people that will be uncomfortable fine the people that won't be fine sometimes i was kind of afraid of being shining too much because i don't want to act like i'm being proud trying to like dim the light so that other people can feel comfortable i'm no more dimming the light for people to feel comfortable i'm going to walk into all that god has for me and i want you to have that same mindset i hope this video is a blessing to you let me know what you think about today's video and remain blessed